Well, firstly, thanks so very much for inviting me to talk here. It's really uh, wonderful to be here. I've been working quite closely with Rob over the last year uh, as Entis is part of the Alliance of Scotland's Training Forest. I haven't actually connected with Westeros Biosphere people yet, um, so it's really nice to be able to make that link. So thanks. So yeah, I'm um, Judy Stoneman. I'm Saving Scotland's Rainforest Project Manager. I think it's probably the best job title I've ever had in my career. Uh, I work for Plant Life Scotland, the uh, wild plant charity. But most of the time you'll see me with a head which says the Alliance for Scotland's Rainforest. And that's because my job is about uh, uh, coordinating the collaborative work between all the alliance, uh, all the partners on the alliance, um, which I'll talk about later. I should add at this stage, I'm not actually um, uh, an expert in rainforest or, or invasive species uh, or the kinds of species you'll find there. Uh, I'm a project manager. So this talk uh, is really to take you through uh, where Scotland's rainforest is. A lot of people have uh, heard of Scotland's rainforest, what makes it so special, some of the threats, and of course I'll uh, focus on rhododendron for this, although a lot of people are talking about that, and a bit about the alliance and what we're doing uh, in our collaborative work. So Scotland's rainforest is part of this uh, biome called coastal temperate rainforest. This is a really rare habitat around the world. Less than 1% of the world's surface has climatic conditions that you need to support it. And those climatic conditions are ones you're probably very familiar with if you lived on the west, which is um, uh, very, very wet weather, uh, lots of rainfall, mild winters, very few frosty days uh, and cool summer but also you need clean air for this habitat and it's this strange disjunct distribution around the world so you'll find it in British Columbia, in Chile, in Japan, uh, in New Zealand but you also find it here in Europe and um, I saw there's somebody from Iceland on the list uh, you sit there in Iceland if you're up there uh, but we've got bags of it on the west coast of um, Scotland. Here it is in Scotland. We, this is what we call the rainforest zone, which is the area that we work to. It, it's quite a big geophic zone going all the way from northern Sutherland down to South Fark Isle, taking in most of um, in the Hebrides. This map is a, what we call a heat map, and um, it gives an indication as to where the most important places are. It's not absolute, so if you know a bit of really good rainforest on a square that's quite light coloured, don't worry, it doesn't pick up all the different fragments, but it helps, this map helps us zone in on the places which uh, count the most. And you can see there's some nice hot areas up here in Westeros. Um, within this zone, there's about 30,000 hectares of what we call core rainforest. So this is a uh, woodland which supports the species that are um, indicative of rainforest. Um, there's another 92,000 hectares of woodland in this zone as well. So that could also be rainforest one day. Um, the rainforest is any kind of very natural woodland within this zone. So it could be <clears throat> a lot of people think about oak woodlands or hazel woodlands, but it's also birch, pine or ash. Um, any kind of semi-natural woodland. And the interesting thing about this habitat, and uh, I noticed that in, in Peter's talk earlier, um, was uh, that it's called by lots of different names. Um, so until very recently on the NTS website, it was referred to Celtic rainforest. And I think Cass did a great job of, of um, calling Scotland's rainforest on there. Uh, we've called it Celtic rainforest in the past in uh, Plant Life um, Scotland uh, project as well. It's often called Atlantic woodland, or Western Atlantic woodland. Peter referred to it as Atlantic rainforest. Uh, so there has been a problem over the years um, in that we've been calling it lots of different kinds of names. And that's if you're trying to win a something, you've got to be talking about the same thing. You've got to make your comms um, very uh, simple. So in the Alliance uh, last year, we said, right, we're just going to call it Scotland's Rainforest. Up here in Scotland, that's what we're going to call it. We even changed the name of the Alliance from the uh, Atlantic Woodlands Alliance to the Alliance of Scotland's Rainforest. So we're all speaking with one voice. So I know it's uh, often difficult to change these terminologies and um, might get a few rolled eyeballs, but if you could call it Scotland's Rainforest, that would be fantastic. Oops. Um, it's not actually the trees that make this habitat a globally important habitat, it's actually what's inside them. Uh, and anybody who knows a bit about the rainforest will, um, will know this. When you go inside, it's a very magical, sort of damp, humid place. Uh, and it's all uh, uh, what makes the rainforest so special, these lower plants that clothe the place. Like the, the, the rock, the trees, the ravines are just plastered in what we call bryophytes, the mosses and the lichens, uh, mosses and lichens. Uh, and also lichens. 
And it's the sheer quantity and diversity of these species in the rainforest that makes this habitat so special. So one of Scotland's rainforest can contain more than 200 species of lichens, uh, and some of the best sites have more than 200 species of bryophytes in them. So that makes these woodlands uh, amongst the richest for bryophytes and lichens in all of Europe. And that's because we've got the right climate, we've got clean air, not to mention the woodlands themselves. So this is a, a nice headline that Rob might approve of. <laughs> uh, there's two bit, there's some massive problems that challenge this habitat and they're all big scale and difficult to manage. Um, so the one we're focusing on today is rhododendron ponticum. You're all quite familiar with this, introduced uh, into the UK in 1763, since run rampant all over the UK and it's particularly prevalent in the rainforest zone. It's an absolute disaster for these woodlands because it's so aggressive. It colonizes all over the place. It casts heavy shade. It prevents regeneration of native trees and it shades out all those lichens and bryophytes that I've been talking about, uh, as well as everything else. Um, so it significantly reduces the biodiversity value of these sites. And when you remove it, though, that biodiversity value can take decades to recover. So it's better if it doesn't get there in the first place. But here it is already. Um, we don't have very good up-to-date maps of where rhododendron is uh, in the rainforest zone. This one is based on data from the Native Woodland Survey of Scotland, which was published in 2014. Um, but the data that was put that together was much older than that. So this is an old view. And I imagine the situation is much worse, as we've said before. Today, the longer you leave this, the worse it gets. Uh, rhododendron seems to be worse in the southern area of this rainforest. But you can see some hot spots up here in, in Westeros as well that we need to be paying attention to. Um, it's, it's in about 13,000 hectares of the core rainforest area. So that's about 40% of the rainforest. Um, but it's not just the core rainforest you need to clear, it's the sites around it to prevent reinvasion. So that would add another 24,000 um, hectares to do. If you go into other woodland, you add on another 24,000 hectares. Uh, and if you look at everywhere in the rainforest zone, you need to add on another 80,500 hectares. So this is a massive job to be done and um, we need to uh, persuade the decision makers to help us do it. I'm not going to talk too much about tackling rhododendron because I'm really not the expert here, but in the alliance, um, we acknowledge that to do this, you can't do it by halves. Uh, there's plenty of failed projects of rhododendron clearance where it's been done on small scale and not concerted enough. If you want to do this, you need to work on landscape scale. Uh, you've got to incorporate buffer zones to prevent reinvasion. You need to come back and deal with the regrowth. Um, we can't do it. Also, we need to focus on areas of high conservation value and we need to make sure we've got the right techniques for the right place for the right species. There's, um, I'll stop on rhododendron there because you've got enough experts in the room, but there's plenty of other threats to this habitat. So just very briefly to go through those, um, another about 40% of the rainforest zone again is adversely affected by high levels of deer browsing, so they prevent regeneration. Um, this is quite a hot political potato at the moment, of course, um, as we await for the government's response to the Deer Working uh, Group um, report last year. I think it's going to come any minute. Um, so there could be changes here. Um, it's not that we want to get rid of deer completely. Deer are part of this ecosystem and you need them there. If you uh, just stick a fence around and let everything grow, that will also shade out all those bryophytes and lichens. So it's about getting the balance right. That's what we want to do. Exotic um, conifers have been a problem. There's a lot of zealous planting of Scotland in the 70s and 80s, of course. About a fifth of rainforest habitat was planted over in that time. Uh, there is a recognition that that was a mistake and there are uh, there's quite a lot of work, uh, especially by Forest Land Scotland, uh, to rectify that. Um, so that's, uh, that's on the way, but that's a very long uh, and difficult issue to deal with. We've got ash dieback coming in, uh, moving up from the south. This is a real issue because ash is home to some quite specialist lichen species. And um, there is some hope, I guess, and there might be some resilience in there. Um, also, these species can live on other uh, kinds of trees. Uh, we don't know enough about what's happening with ash dieback in these woodlands yet, but this is an issue. Um, uh, and there's lots of other things like climate change, nitrogen pollution, infrastructure development. It's a, it's a bit of a nightmare out there, lots to think about. Um, and what's very telling, and if you look on the slide on the right here, is um, 
these woods are very fragmented. So there might be 50,000 hectares, um, but they're very small areas. The medium, the median size of each patch is only 25 hectares. So they're very vulnerable. We need to expand these patches. We need to connect them up and make them more resilient. So there is plenty of work to do. Um, so in, math, in, in a summary, this uh, matter requires urgent attention. Um, and that's where the Alliance for Scotland's Rainforest comes in. Um, so this is a group of organisations, there's 21 of them now, that all want the same thing. They all want Scotland's rainforest to thrive once again. Uh, this was the brainchild of, uh, of the Woodland Trust, who um, are very interested in these West Coast woodlands as well. And they um, started to pull together, they realised that they couldn't do this work alone. Uh, so they started to pull together people with a similar interest in around 2017. And that group has grown ever since. You'll see the usual suspects of who you might imagine in there, NTS of course, uh, RSPB, Scottish Wildlife Trust all sitting in there. We've got some very specialist societies. We've also got some of the statutory agencies as well. So it's quite a big uh, group of people to deal with, all working very collaboratively uh, for the rainforest. The first, in the first two years of the existence of this alliance um, was spent making the case. And this resulted with a publication which you can Google and download off the Woodland Trust website if you wish, uh, called the State of Scotland's Rainforest. And this was the first time that we really set down what why this habitat is so important uh, and what the problem was, you know, what the challenges were that was faced, uh, that is faced. And this was um, launched to great media attention in the Botanic Gardens in May 2019. And that really put the case on the line for the first time. I started my job about uh, just over a year ago uh, and inherited this and some ideas about what we could do. Um, but really, you can't do everything at once. Uh, so we asked ourselves the question uh, in the short term, if we want to have the most impact, where should we focus our collaborative efforts? And with that, we came up with a three year strategy that we're all working to now. And we're, we've just finished the first year of it. Excuse me. <clears throat> So the first of these is about establishing landscape scale projects to restore and expand forest habitats. Uh, the second is about identifying how the Scottish Government can help us. That's a very carefully worded objective and I'll tell you why in a minute. The third is about encouraging and enabling landowners and the fourth is about maximising collaboration between all the partners as you might imagine. Um, in the first year we've really been focusing on these two objectives on the left. Uh, the ones on the right are coming. Again, you can't do everything at once, but also lockdown doesn't help us when, you come, when it comes to third and fourth objectives. So while well, we've done what we can, um, uh, that will come later. So let me just tell you a bit about the first two then. These are the landscape scale projects. Um, I should say there's plenty more going on in this, in this area than the landscape scale projects, but these are the ones that we're all getting behind. They're big projects over several um, uh, landowning estates, working very collaboratively together. So the ones on the left are ready to go. We just need the funding. Uh, we've got Saving Morven's Rainforest uh, that's led by RSPB and that focuses on the Morven Peninsula which is really a great place to do large-scale rhododendron control uh, because it's a peninsula and therefore it's difficult for this species to reinvade. Um, there's another project called Saving Argyles Rainforest down in Argyll being led by the Argyll Coast and Community Trust uh, and that's again about um, uh, habitat restoration and expansion working really closely with the community. So two slightly different projects, but all going towards the same thing. On the right are the ones that are potential. They're being scoped at the moment, uh, both being led by Woodland Trust Scotland. We've got one up here in Torridon, which is uh, expanding out from um, the Woodland Trust Scotland site at Ben Shieldig. This is all just being scoped at the moment. There's no decisions being made, uh, but we hope that there will be some kind of landscape scale project up in the future. Same with Loch Arcade, which is a bit further, further behind Torridon. And there's actually quite a few other projects in this rainforest zone, which are up and coming, which may be put on this map in the future. Um, so we... Um, so we'll have a lot of work to do. The main thing about these projects, though, is that they're not isolated. They're all part of the same thing, um, and we're all working very closely together to make them happen. So they're seen as uh, Alliance of Scotland's Rainforest projects. They are led by those uh, partners, but we're all behind them, all together, avoiding competition, presenting a united case to the funders we're approaching. Um, the second objective was about 
advocacy. The reason that objective was so carefully worded is because um, we have the Scottish Government in the partnership. We have Scottish forestry in there as well as Forestland Scotland and Nature's Got, so we can't lobby ourselves. So we don't lobby as the Alliance, uh, but what we do as the Alliance is identify the policies that need to change in order to benefit this habitat. And that advice that we have from the Alliance goes out to the partners who can lobby and they go and lobby on their own right or with another forum, say Scottish Environment Link. And these two guys, I'm sure you recognise them, Rosanna Cunningham on the left and Fergus Young on the right, are the sorts of people we need to uh, convince to do this. And we've um, touched on this earlier in a, in a talk about the grant payments, uh, trying to persuade the government to give better uh, grant payments, working at landscape scale to landowners. We need to set a better strategic roadmap to tackle rhododendron at this scale. At the moment, we don't think it's good enough. And we need to, and I think this has been touched on too, recognise that tackling invasive non-native species is recognised as part of the green recovery strategy, also jobs in clearing all these non-native species. Um, the other uh, underline all that is speaking with one voice. Uh, this, of course, is really important. It's something the Alliance has been focusing on quite a lot in the last year, using very consistent language, referring to Scotland's rainforest, giving out that message from all our 21 angles again and again to the people that can make a difference. Um, last month, we, um, we published a film and we published this with a press release that got quite a lot of pickup. Um, and this tells the story about the rainforest from the angle of the people who live and work there. I'm not sure we've got time today to show it. Kaz, what do you think? It's four and a half minutes. Um, so just have a quick double check on time. Oh, how many questions <laughs> have we got in the chat? Um, Zoe, how, how are we looking on the chat? Yeah, there's about four, four or five questions coming. I think possibly then if we can if we can look at the questions and then we'll put the link to this and then people can have a look at it at the at the lunch break if that's okay Julie. Yeah no that's fine um yeah do have a look at this if you haven't seen it already it's a really beautiful film I'm very proud of it um but what's very nice is that it's got some characters from the rainforest and Donald Kennedy who's been uh, mentioned already is one of the characters in there. Oops sorry I'm going to play accidentally. <laughs> There we are. Uh, so this is just the last slide saying um, the Alliance has a website called savingscotlandsrainforest.org.uk. There's a lot more information on there. You can find out where to visit, visit it, where these projects are uh, uh, and um, a bit more about it. Uh, we also have a Twitter handle, AS Rainforest, so please follow us. And if you're tweeting about the rainforest, please use these hashtags and then we can um, follow them back and it helps spread the word. So thank you very much. <laughs>